Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you I'm sure already know today, John Glenn, the first American uh, to orbit the Earth in space there, has died today at the age of 95. Uh, of course, it's been everywhere on the news. Uh, so many people are reporting that. Uh, the former, or excuse me, President-elect Donald Trump saying that he was a national hero, that he had met him a couple of times. And uh, I'm sure every Practically every person that's ever dreamed of going into space definitely knows the name of John Glenn. He was also a senator, uh, but has now passed away at the age of 95. He definitely did get to live a truly long and long life on the earth. Uh, no doubt his family uh, will be missing him for sure. Uh, moving on as well, Israel. The Senate uh, has approved the missile defense aid for Israel. That's the U.S. Senate has approved that. Uh, and also a very concerning situation that we have here. Whoops, sorry about that. And that is uh, the U.S. official warns of North Korea's nuclear capabilities. Now it's, they're saying, according to one U.S. official, that North Korea now has the ability to be able to launch and deliver a nuclear-armed warhead uh, pretty much anywhere it would like to. Uh, said here that North Korea now has the capability to launch a nuclear weapon, a senior U.S. military official said Thursday, adding that while the U.S. believes Pyongyang can mount a warhead on a missile, it's not clear that it can hit a target. The official said it appears that North Korea can mount a nuclear warhead on a missile, but may not have the re-entry capabilities for a st strategic strike. <clears throat> you know, with a nuclear warhead and a nuclear bomb there, I don't think they have to be too strategic about their strike. Pretty much anywhere you were to hit in the U.S. is going to cause a lot of death and a lot of problems. So it is a major issue, uh, without a doubt, and uh, just curious to see how that's going to progress as we move along there. Uh, Obama's legacy, Iran opens a jihad theme park. Kids pretend to attack the U.S. and Israel. Well, what do you know? Memory uh, TV is... Uh, Posted some of the photos here for us. They're showing the young children going there learn how to kill Jews and Americans. Just the kind of theme park I guess every uh, Arab nation would like to have. I don't really think so. But nonetheless, so imagine Iran doing something like this. Obama gave these devout savages billions and billions, says the article here. Can we expect a member of the uh, 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 media to ask the outgoing president why he would enrich and embolden a tyrannical, genocidical regime? Why would they, uh, why would they, they too are aligned with a jihad force? This is uh, written by, oh goodness, who is it written by? Pamela Giller on December the 8th, 2016, uh, reporting, uh, I don't know if this is for memory or who this is actually for, but we can't get rid of the ad that's covering up the title of the Bagilla Report uh, being the name, I guess, of the article here. But that's just about as twisted of a theme park you could possibly get, where youngsters as young as eight are able to don military uniforms and fight battles against the U.S. and Israel at the new attraction in the city of Mashhad. The park is named uh, the City of Games for Revolutionary Children. A new theme park has been opened by the Iranian government where young children learn to be revolutionaries and fight against the country's enemies. Youngsters as young as eight are able to don military uniforms and fight battles against the U.S. and Israel at the new attraction in the city of Mashhad. You know what, though? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe... We do the same thing in the United States. We ever thought about it. Look at all the uh, games that we have for young people today where they go out and they're playing video games all the time. U.S. military fighting battles in different parts of the world. What different? Are we any better doing the exact same thing? So maybe we shouldn't condemn these people so much. They're doing pretty much the same thing. I think it's pretty nutty, period, that they have a theme park for attacking Americans and Jews. But again... Pot can't call kettle black if we have all of our military games on computers for young adults to go around killing all the people in the Middle East. Seems to kind of go both ways, doesn't it? Um, I thought this was a very interesting uh, news footage here. This actually came out though on November 27th, so it's not a, a new report, but it's definitely certainly worth looking at. Uh, Mail Online is where I actually caught it at. The Divine Intervention of God. Bizarre dust and rain clouds form as a barrier between ISIS and Israel on the Syrian border. On November 27, two ISIS fighters were killed during an attack 
on the Golan Heights. Four days later, a cloak of dust and rain suddenly appeared on the frontier. Israeli forces have occupied the Golan Heights in Syria since 1967, according to the report here. Uh, but you can see here, of course, they keep playing it over and over and over. It is kind of interesting. Of course, this time of year, Israel does have a lot of the storms that blow in. And actually, the dust kicks up. But uh, it, it did kind of make a buffer-like zone there, which was uh, kind of interesting. And no doubt, the Israeli soldiers really appreciating that. The article does state that the, the dust storm never came into the Israeli side of the Golan there. It was only just across the border there and just created a huge barrier of dust there where um, the ISIS that is uh, lurking over the border there cannot see anything inside of Israel. Uh, moving on as well, Israel is uh, going to get the uh, new uh, uh, jet, excuse me, Israeli jet strikes. I'm sorry, my bad. This is, uh, this is going back to the article from the other day that we brought out to you where Damascus Airport was hit by the Israeli government. Uh, this is on Global Research, says uh, Arab News Outlet. Uh, today, Wednesday morning, that Israeli jet struck the target at Damascus Airport, according to the Al Mayadeen television channel. The jets targeted the uh, Mazi military airport in Damascus, which neighbors President Bashar Assad's palace. Loud explosions in the Mazi uh, neighborhood were also reported on social media. Now, they also speak about two in the article here. Um, where Israel had struck the convoy that was headed to Damascus, excuse me, to, uh, to Hezbollah over in Lebanon, and uh, which was interesting because one particular article in Israel that I saw was speaking about how that this was actually uh, carrying chemical weapons. Uh, so I can certainly see why Israel would have to target a Hezbollah convoy in, in light of the fact that it may have had chemical weapons. I still don't think that Israel should be targeting uh, the Syrian government. The Syrian government has not been targeting Israel at, whatsoever, and I think that that's kind of out of line, but it's still happening nonetheless. Uh, something I want to share, just a short clip with you here on closing here. Uh, this video, a 30-minute video on uh, my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God. In fact, you can see that right here. On the screen here, Rise Up Children of God is her channel there. She had a very interesting interview there with Lauren. Uh, and Lauren, who is a healthcare provider in a hospital, uh, spoke with uh, my wife on her channel about va forced vaccinations and the RFID chip. This is going to become a mandatory issue for healthcare workers. The vaccinations have become mandatory. But this young lady, uh, Laura, Laura Atkinson, is fighting it and in a very brave way. Uh, we'll include also Laura's, uh, um, Lauren, excuse me, not Laura, Lauren, Lauren Atkinson. We will include Lauren Atkinson's um, uh, YouTube channel here in the description below, uh, as well as this interview that my wife did with Laura. Take a listen here to what she has to say, her very interesting interview. I went into music, actually, but... I, I just know that vaccines contain these toxic chemicals. Can you name just few for my listeners so they know what they're getting when they're vaccinating uh, their children? Um, I thought it actually might hurt me. Let me grab it. Sorry, okay. I've got my phone stabilized. Okay. I don't mean to be so... It's okay. You can see me. Okay. So let's just take the CDC's generalized flu shot that they're pushing for the 2015-2016 season. They're calling it flu ad, mm -hmm. okay? And there's 14 different foreign bodies in this shot, and that's including the three viruses they're wanting to light you up with. Right. So in the flu ad, this is a list of them. We've got MF59C, which I'll get to in just a second. We have um, polysorbate 80, sorbitine torlate, sodium citric hydrate, citric acid mon non monohydrate, then on top of that, we have some antibiotics. We have neomycin, canomycin. Let me take you on a little bit further into this. One of the serious things about this here is that Lauren is speaking Today, about just to let you know, it, um, forced vaccinations for healthcare providers. And then also, um, let me see if I can find it real fast here. Um, yes, here it is right here. The RFID, this is on a uh, hospital monitor. 
And as you can see on the screen here, the RFID chip number is now part of your medical record. Take a few seconds here and listen to what they say here about Over this. In my state, she did not tell me the hospital. I didn't ask. It doesn't matter. But it's happening in our uh, charting. They're putting this into our charting systems now and prepping us for the microchip. Okay? And it's prepping us. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, if I'm correct, if I've read some reports correct, a lot of Shipping is happening over in Europe. They're calling this the medical health care chip. They're putting it here in the hand. Mm -hmm. People are able to open their doors and stuff with it. It's really creepy. It's weird. Yeah, well, and we live in Europe. We live in Czech Republic. And in the news recently, we had that 16 people here voluntarily had it implanted. So they are trying it on volunteers right now. And we got also word from our lawyer. Uh, because we have to pay him for our office where we have office and uh, we were trying to pay him in cash and he said well you know that's going to have to stop because by 20, April 2018 if I'm correct he said we're going to have a cashless society and imagine all that so we're going to a cashless society we're going now uh, like what Lauren said right here we're going to where you will be microchipped um, they're, they're going to make that mandatory. Mandatory vaccines for healthcare providers. It's just a matter of time before it's mandatory um, for everyone. And then we have to wonder, all the other infrastructure, things that they've been putting into place, you can't, uh, they, they got laws laying there saying that you can't grow your own food, you can't stockpile food. No wonder why. Give yourself a cashless society, microchip the people and everything, and you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark, and you can't grow your own food, and you certainly can't stockpile no food. They're going to try to make sure they really force this issue in the very coming near future. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Check out, um, again, I'll, uh, my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God, for the rest of this interview, and also will include a link to Lauren's uh, YouTube channel as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.